This is Cashology by FMBO, a podcast devoted to the art and science of managing your money. It's like school, but your only homework is living your best financial life. Class is now in session. From groceries to gas, everything costs a bit more these days, and it may have you thinking that you should be taking up a side hustle. If this is on your mind, you are not alone. Surveys show that nearly one in three Americans have a side hustle of some kind, and a lot more people are considering it. The extra income helps fight inflation and serves as a safety net in the event of a job loss or an unexpected expense. But what are the keys to finding the perfect side hustle? Welcome, and thanks for listening to the Cashology Podcast, hosted by your guide on the path to financial savvy, me, Julie Wyans. I am very happy to introduce you to our guest today, Molly Diamond. Molly is a regulatory compliance auditor at FMBO and has been with us a year and a half. She will help us navigate through today's topic, five tips for finding your perfect side hustle. Hi, Molly. Welcome. Hi, Julie. Thanks for having me today. Before we dive into the topic, I wanted to let our listeners know that they should not forget to subscribe to the Cashology podcast. You can get alerts when our new episodes go live. Okay, like, here goes. Investment products are not FDIC insured, not a deposit or other obligation of the bank, not insured by any federal government agency, not guaranteed by the bank, may lose value. This podcast should not be copied or reproduced without permission. Information and statements within this podcast are subject to change without notice. The Cashology podcast is for informational purposes only and is not intended to constitute investment advice or recommendations. First National Bank of Omaha does not make any representation or warranty as to the accuracy or completeness of any information or statements within this podcast. When making decisions about your financial situation, consult a financial professional for advice. Podcasts are not regularly updated and information may become outdated. Deposit products are offered by First National Bank of Omaha, member FDIC, equal housing lender. The Cashology Podcast, copyright First National Bank of Omaha. I mean, totally. Okay, bye. So Molly, I think we both have in the past have had a side hustle. You were once a server? I was. I was a server and bartender when my son was first born because let's face it, kids are expensive. Yeah, that is so smart. I mean, not only, I mean, not only can you work your own hours, right? You can give them work nights after a nine to five, um, but you can also maybe work a weekend shift here and there, make a lot of tips. That's so smart. Definitely. Sundays were great because it was a sports bar. So I was able to watch all of the games and still make a little extra on the side. You know, a lot of people have crazy side hustles. So we've heard of one uh, in Japan. A guy is paid to be friends with people, go to the movies, hang out. That's that's one wacky one that I've heard. Another one, um, I know someone that writes wedding speeches for people. I used to be a wedding planner. I would love those people. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of smart. You think of the the needs in society and you think, oh, well, people get really clamored up and, and nervous about giving a speech and writing them. It's kind of genius. One of the most wacky ones, though, that I've heard of, Molly, is paying someone to be their bridesmaid. What? That's a thing. Yeah, that's a thing. Oh, my gosh. I want that job. That would be fantastic. I feel like you would be an excellent paid bridesmaid. <laughs> I would enjoy that. <laughs> Have you heard of any weird side hustles? Actually, the wedding planner that I used to work with was a master at calligraphy. And so she would charge people, instead of doing the wedding planning piece, just to write their envelopes because it, she had great penmanship. That is amazing. I took one calligraphy class at a community college in Omaha. I loved it. I was horrible at it. I could never make money off of it. <laughs> I always take these classes thinking, yes, this could be a fun hobby and maybe I'll make money off of it. I learned how to make French macarons. I actually sold one box of them. I mean, it was a good good dollar made, but uh, really difficult to sustain. <laughs> so I think for- it's very time intensive. Yes. One of our first tips to getting a side hustle is maybe find one that is not super time consuming and expensive where you actually maybe make a profit. <laughs> um, so let's dive in, Molly, and talk more about building the perfect side hustle. What kind of tips do you have for listeners? Tip number one, 
find something that you have a personal interest in or something you're already good at. Like I was saying, I had a friend who was a wedding planner. She was already in the industry. She already had brides on her book. What better thing to do than learn calligraphy and write out the envelopes? However, if you're in something like accounting, there's plenty of places that need a bookkeeper on the side, a few hours here or there just to help them out. Um, Maybe you work in IT and you know how to code or build websites. I have a volunteer business right now that would love to have an IT person that knows how to build a website. The better you already are and the more experience you already have at your side hustle, the easier it will be to start and to find consumers for your product or your service. So that's amazing. You have uh, a volunteer group that's looking for someone who works in IT. I mean, there are plenty of small businesses who are trying to be scrappy and and find individuals maybe who also have a small business to band together, right? Absolutely. So I think there's a plethora of opportunities. It's just a matter of finding what you're passionate about, right? And then finding the people. Absolutely. What you're passionate about and what you already have a talent in. Use what you have. Yeah. Um, You know, how about time and fitting a side hustle into your schedule? We talked about being a server is really great for a side hustle because you can work nights, right? You can have a nine to five and then work nights or on the weekends. For sure. Tell us more about scheduling around a side hustle. Absolutely. So doing something you already know how to do takes a lot less time too. And that's tip number two, find something that fits into your schedule. So if you're working full time, find something that you can side hustle on the evenings or on the weekends. So if you're an expert, um, let's say maybe you're a math tutor or something like that, where you can finish up school Monday through Friday and work a few hours on the evening or weekend to help other students. Um, Health, wellness, fitness, nutrition, cooking, all of that can be done in the evenings, on the weekends. If you're a student, maybe in between class times to be able to help those around you and make a dollar doing it. But your full-time job still has to remain your priority. I was going to say, Molly, I I think that's an excellent note to end on uh, with this tip because when it comes to scheduling, your family, your friends, your personal life should come first along with your primary job, right? And I think any employer would support their employee pursuing their passions outside of work to make additional dollars as long as it doesn't impede on their day-to-day. Would you agree? Absolutely, I would agree to that. I think if anything, it shows an employer that you're motivated and driven. Well, let's talk about the cost. You know, talk about the calligraphy business. Um, I think being a server, there's not a cost to having that side hustle except your time. Um, What advice do you have when it comes to a side hustle that may take a lot to start? Sure. So tip number three is to find something without startup costs, or at least with limited startup costs. If you have to hire other people, it's probably not a good side hustle to start with. Maybe you'll get there if that's your dream. But maybe you start with something that you already know. So for instance, this calligraphy that we've been describing, calligraphy pens can be expensive, but if you only need one or two, the startup cost is very minimal. Perhaps you want to help mow lawns. If you already have a lawnmower at home, mowing the neighbor's house really doesn't become that big of an issue. But if you need something that involves more tools, say you're a handyman or you want to be, if you only have limited tools at home, that's probably not a great side hustle to start. Use what you have or limited resources if that's what you need for your side hustle. Absolutely, Molly. I think that's really great advice too. You know, you mentioned not hiring people. Our advice when it comes to side hustles is to keep it yourself, right? Make sure it's something you can perform or do or produce um, because you want to keep expenses low. However, you mentioned there could be a time or place where this passion you want to turn into your majority profit right? Someone who is baking on the side might have a dream of opening up a bakery one day. And if they're getting excellent reviews and a lot of customers coming through the door, there might be expectation to hire out and hire others and maybe lease out a space. What other tips do you have in regards to that? So if you want to grow your business, then that's fine. Your side hustle could become your full-time job. Sooner or later, you're going to have to hire staff. For instance, if you're great at baking and you want to open up that baker shop, find a side hustle with growth potential then. If you don't want it to replace your full-time job, then you might just want to manage. So you might have to have other people who take the, the main tasks, whether that's managing scheduling or staffing, 
Um, if you're a painter, you might have to add other painters, but make sure that you can just look at it from a management role if you don't want it to become your full time. But if full time's your dream, go for it. Oh, we all feel so inspired, Molly. This is great. So I think maybe we'll end on a little bit of a negative note, but I want to know, are there any cautionary advice or tales that you want to share with us in starting a side hustle before we adjourn? Definitely. There are some things that you should keep in mind if you plan to do a side hustle. Number one, make sure it's something you enjoy. Your side hustle should not be exhausting to you. It should be energizing to make extra money. Next, keep really good records. You want to be able to manage your side hustle well and you might have to pay taxes on what you earn. So you want to make sure you understand where the money came from. Make sure there's no conflict of interest with your primary job. And uh, for instance, if you're a social media manager for the bank, if you're in marketing, that may or may not be a good plan. Make sure you don't take on any banking clients in your side gig. Keep the primary job and the side hustle as separate as you can. Don't create any conflict of interest that will jeopardize your primary job. Remember, that's still your main source of income. The side hustle is just a supplement. That is awesome. And for anyone who's interested in, in starting their own side hustle, there are a couple of really great articles out there. One specifically from Entrepreneur has 44 profitable ideas to make extra money on the side. So go ahead and search that. It has some just really good thought starters in how to make some extra money. Well, Molly, it was a pleasure to have you on the podcast. You are an excellent guest and so knowledgeable on this topic. So we really appreciate it. Thank you, Julie. I appreciate you having me. Of course. And if anyone's interested in learning more about products at FMBO, or maybe chatting with a personal banker about your finances and seeing how a side hustle could help with your budget, feel free to go to fmbo.com to learn more. Thank you everyone for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and keep an eye out for more Cashology episodes coming your way soon.